Get great deals throughout the store at Safeway. This week at Safeway, get mega packs of bone-in USDA choice beef New York strip steaks for $5.97 per pound with digital coupon. Limit two packages. Plus, Haas avocados are $10 for $10, member price. Also, this week at Safeway, mix or match 12 packs of 12-ounce cans or 8 packs of 12-ounce bottles of Coca-Cola, Pepsi, 7-Up, or Dr. Pepper are buy two, get three free. Limit three free items, member price, plus CRV. Visit Safeway.com or head in store for more deals. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. To everyone, everywhere, season's greetings from Hollywood. We take great pleasure and pride in presenting our beautiful and gifted star of motion pictures, television, and radio, Miss Lorraine Day, in an intriguing tale, A Christmas for Eve. This is Lorraine Day. Like you, I've often heard that the eyes are the window to the soul. Have you ever thought that the eyes are rather the camera for the soul, reflecting a picture of the world around us as we view it through our own petty avarices and suspicions or compassion and love? Our story is of a girl whose life was changed twice by two different events 20 years apart. Each occurred on Christmas Eve. Now, here is Lorraine Day, starring in our drama of Yuletide suspense and romance, A Christmas for Eve. It was always the same for me every Christmas. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get it out of my mind. Like it was only yesterday, inside me a fire burned, fed by the memory of that Christmas Eve. Oh, well, Eve, what is it? I'm sorry, Barbara. I dropped them. Oh, it's only a couple of Christmas ornaments. We've got plenty of them. I'll clean up while you get some others. It's no use, Barbara. I'm no better off here than I was back home. I'm still haunted by the things that happened 20 years ago tonight. My mother in that burning house. My father hating me. Oh, stop the pacing and sit down, honey. <sighs> oh, father hating his only child. Well, you've built it up out of proportion, Eve. Oh, no, I haven't. I was the one who tried to decorate the tree with a lit candle. After what he used to say, he wished I'd been killed instead of her. It was an accident, Eve. Not to him, it wasn't. He made my childhood miserable. I know. When we were little girls, you never smiled. But it's time you learned again. Don't you know why I wanted you to come to New York and share this apartment after your father died? You're a true friend, Barb. I know it wasn't just because you felt sorry for me. Okay, then it's time you forget the past and start to meet people. Oh, I can't. Why not? Once you break the ice, it's a cinch. A cinch for you. Your face isn't scarred by fire. It's not half as bad as you think. Look into mirrors once in a while instead of avoiding them. You'll see I'm right. I've looked. What looks back sickens me. <sighs> what you need is a boot. You know what I'm going to do? Talk to the boss first thing in the morning about a job. Oh, no. No, don't do that. It was a mistake, my coming here. I'd better go home. Oh, I want you to stay, Eve. New York is a big, big city. You'll find yourself. Barbara was wrong. You don't find yourself in New York. You lose yourself. It's easier in a city of 8 million people than in a town of 8,000. And she's wrong about the mirror. I'm looking right now. That face is still scarred. Hideous. 
It's true people here don't gape. But no man will ever be attracted to me. I hate this face. I wish... I wish I could sink my fingers into it and rip it off. Eve, will you answer the door? I'm not through with my makeup. Oh, you answer it, Barbara. I'm sorry. I'd better go into the kitchen. Sure, I know. I'll get it. Hold on, Ronnie. I'm coming. Hi, Cupcake. Hi. Happy New Year. Ready to blast off? I just have to grab my coat and finish my face. The face is beautiful enough. Latch onto the coat. (laughs) (laughs) I'm with you, boy. Eve, change your mind and come to the party with us. No. No, thanks, Barbara. I can't. Oh, don't wait up. I'll probably be late. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Have a real good time. Come on, Ronnie. You know, Barb, if I didn't hear Eve's voice, I'd think she was someone you dreamed up for protection. What's with her, anyway? Nothing. Nothing at all. She's shy. Shy. Well, that's one word for it. Saturday night and New Year's Eve all rolled into one. Well, my lady, what is your pleasure this evening? A concert? A ride in the park? (sighs) What have we here? The Sunday paper. Well, let's see what the true companion for the shy has on tap. The comic. Drama and art reviews, society, ah, the want ads, help wanted, female, male, business opportunities, personal column, uh, why be lonely, write us, tell us about yourself and who you'd like to meet. Our files are full of satisfied correspondents who were once too shy and unhappy to make good friends by themselves. If you are sincere, intelligent, and honest, why not join? Why not? Just a a correspondence. We might even make believe we're... Well, why not? We'll never have to meet. Never. Oh, hello there, Miss Lanier. Say, that letter you're expecting must be mighty important. Been waiting here by the mailboxes every day for the past week. <laughs> uh, let's see now. Uh, David Masterson, Mr. and Mrs. J.F. Ritter, Whitford, Nye, Shepherd, Montrose. Oh, no, no. Nothing today, I'm sorry. Maybe tomorrow. Who does he think he's kidding? Even by mail, my ugliness must show. No letter will come. No one will ever answer. Miss Lady, say, I'm sorry. I must have made a mistake in sorting this morning. But I guess you don't mind, because here's a letter for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. A letter. I've got a letter. Stop trembling, I say. Stop it. A letter. Go on. Open it. My dear Miss Lanier, I'm I have the honor, honor to address you through the auspices of the Friendship Club. There is so much one would like to say in a first letter, but one must try to feel what another would like to know. I have come recently to this country, and though my life is good in the avenues of my labor, I find that even after six months, I still have no friends. Perhaps if I have the honor to receive a reply to this letter, we may one day clasp hands and call each other friend. That will be good. Most respectfully yours, Paul Pasick. P.S. I am enclosing a photograph of myself, as I know you would like to see with what manner of person you are corresponding. Would I offend you if I ask for one of you in return? Would I offend you if I ask for one of you in return? A photo... A photo of me? (laughs) 
Eve? I'm over here, Barbara, on the couch by the fireplace. Alone in the dark. Why didn't you turn on a light? Oh, there's enough light in the fireplace. I was just sitting here thinking. I didn't realize it was so late. Oh, I'm beat. But we had a load of fun. You must have. Are you cold? Come ice skating with us next time, Eve. Just a bunch of girls from the office. No men at all. I'd like to, Barbara, but you know I can't. Uh, by the way, may I have a snapshot of you? Huh? A snap? Sure. What for? For a friend. What? Well, yes, you see, I, I got a letter. Good. Anyone I know? N no. Yes, sure, you know her. It, it's from um, Mrs. Martin back home. I, I wrote and told her about New York and, and our sharing this apartment together. Oh, I remember her. Of course I do. She remembers you, too. She, she wants to know what you look like now. Oh, okay. Send her one of those snaps Ronnie took last week. Let's see, where's that album? Oh, here it is. I still have a bunch of pictures to glue. May I pick one out? Sure. Help yourself. Uh, this one. Oh, no. That dress, and look at my hair. Oh, I like it. Yes, I like it very much. It shows your face so clearly. <laughs> My dear Mr. Pasek, I was happy to receive your letter. You sound like a very worthwhile person. You must have had great patience and a great desire to learn to have mastered our language so well. Your request for a photograph did not offend me. I'm enclosing one. My dear Eve, forgive me for taking the liberty of addressing you by your given name. Your letters fill me with a warmth I have never known and give me the courage to call you Eve. It seems strange that we should have met through such a commonplace and prosaic means as a newspaper advertisement. For certainly the future holds much that is not prosaic for the two of us. Dear Paul, when I was very young and things were simple, I had two lives. The everyday one, filled with the doings of other people, and another one into which I would retreat because I was too shy to join the first. I would set my dolls on the table and talk to them. And they would answer back in kindness, for they did not hurt others. Your photograph now stands on the table under the lamp, and I can talk to you. I have searched your face and see kindness, gentleness, and understanding. And I know you are not the person to laugh when a man bears his soul. I can see this in your picture. And I know from your letters that your beauty is not only of the surface. A heartfelt, warm greeting to you. Ever your devoted friend, Paul Pasek. Uh, P.S. This Friday night there is a concert at Carnegie Hall. They play Sibelius. Please, would you accompany me? Please, would you accompany me? Oh, Paul. Paul, why did you have to spoil it? How can I meet you? How can I ever let you see this face? Some days have now passed, and I have had no answer to my last letter. And still no letter comes from you, my dear Eve. Perhaps I have written something to offend you. For though I wait for the mail hungrily, there is no word of you. Are you ill? That must be it. That has to be the reason. Isn't that the doorbell, Barbara? No, it's the house phone, Eve. I'll get it. Now, why would anyone call from downstairs? Door's open. All they have to do is... Hello? Is this the residence of Miss Eve Lane here? Yes. Who is it, please? Uh, Paul Pasek. If she is in, may I come up to see her? I'm a friend. Why, of course. Come up. Apartment 207. Come right up. We'll return in just a moment with the conclusion of our Yuletide tale, A Christmas for Eve, starring Miss Lorraine Day. And now, back to our presentation of A Christmas for Eve, 
starring Lorraine Day. someone's coming up, I'll go into the kitchen, Barbara. Eve, you've been holding out on me. It's someone for you. For me? Paul Pasek. Oh, no. He said he was a friend of yours, so I told him to come up. You shouldn't have. You had no right to. Why, Eve, what's the matter? Well, do something. Leave. Get out. Please. Oh, very well, if that's the way you want it, but calm down, will you? <gasps> it's him. Barbara, don't go yet. Help me turn out the light. Please. Don't just stand there. Thanks. Now, out the kitchen door. Hurry. Eve? Eve? Are you there? All, all right. Just a minute. What do you want? Eve? Yes? Are you all right? Yes. Oh, I thought you must be ill. I, I wrote three times. You did not answer. I must know why. Is it something I wrote? No. May I come in? Only for a moment. I want to talk to you, to help if I can. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I want to see you. Believe me, I do, but it's really impossible. You mean that I'm never going to see you? Is that it? I'm afraid so, Paul. But your letters, Eve, they've meant so much to me. They've made me hope and gave me strength to go on. It seems so strange, so, so unlike what I have pictured you. Aren't you seeing me as perhaps you want to see me? <laughs> How can I see in this darkness and through this fastened door? I know we both have deep-rooted problems. We will solve them together. Time is what we need most. Give us time. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. I know I am. Come out with me tomorrow night. There is a small cafe on 67th Street. They have only candlelight. Oh, no, Paul, no. Do I can't. Do not turn me down. I beg of you. I plead with you. Tell me you will go before I leave. Tell me you will go or I cannot leave. No, Paul. No. Please. A man opens his heart. Do not trample on it. All right, Paul. All right. Only go now. You must go. Open the door for just one moment, Eve. That I may kiss you goodnight. No, Paul. I'll see you tomorrow. Eve. Paul, please go. <laughs> No, Eve. Paul gone? Yes. He's some guy, huh? Oh, he is, Barbara. I agreed to go out with him tomorrow night. Wonderful. It's like a dream come true. Only it won't come true for me. I can't face him. Go with him tomorrow night in my place. Pretend I'm you. You're out of your mind. I'd never get away with it. Oh, yes, you will. You see, he thinks you are Eve Lanier. Well, how could he? That picture you gave me for Mrs. Martin, I sent it to Paul as mine. I'm sorry. Eve, you didn't. Don't you understand, Barb? He's all the things you said a man should be. I do want to face him and find out if he is, if, if my face won't matter to him. Well, then do it. Not yet. Not this soon. You know about men. You find out if he's really what I think he is. He... he kissed you tonight? No. He... he wanted to, but I didn't let him. He'll want to again. You... you can't. You won't let him. But suppose he insists. Barbara, I trust you. All right, Eve. But please, don't blame me for anything that happens. <laughs> Uh, 
So lovely, Eve. So wonderful. But then it's as I expected you would be. Paul, I can't go on with this. It's completely dishonest. Huh? What are you trying to say, Eve? Uh, only that I can't live this masquerade another minute. I'm Eve's roommate, Barbara Cooper. Eve wouldn't see you herself. I volunteered to take her place. After all, it's my picture that you think is Eve. No, Barbara. I think I've known for some time that the picture Eve sent me wasn't hers. Do you know why Eve refuses to see you? Only a suspicion. Something she thinks I won't like about her look. Some physical shortcoming that she has built into a Frankenstein, perhaps. Exactly. A face scarred from a fire that happened when Eve was a small girl. A scar that Eve builds and magnifies to the point where she won't even look into a mirror. How silly of her. As if a little thing like a scarred face could make any difference. Barbara, how can we overcome this? Well, perhaps we could make her jealous. Huh. I'm willing to try one more masquerade if you want me to. I do. And this is what I want you to do. Tell Eve of our date. Say that I kissed you. Tell her you have fallen in love with me. Perhaps this shock treatment will snap her out of it. I hate to lie to Eve. But I think this case calls for something drastic. Well, I hope that this drastic device won't react against me. Hello? Eve? Yes, is this Paul? Yes, Eve. I had to call to say thank you for last night. It was so wonderful seeing you, dear. The cozy dinner in our little restaurant. The ride in the carriage through Central Park with the snow making everything hushed and still. Paul, please. Don't stop me, dear. Last night is a memory that will live with me always. Will it live with you, Eve? Paul, don't. The memory of that first kiss. Eve, I must see you, dear. Tonight? No, Paul. No. But, dear, it's Christmas Eve. No, Paul. No. No, Paul. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. Eve, come help me with this stuff, will you? More Christmas presents from work, Barbara? No. I really collected the loot this year. I also bought more decorations for the tree. They're in the red and green bag. I've been waiting all day to talk to you. But I've been wanting to talk to you. It's about Paul. I know. I'm through with the masquerade. You're in love with him? That's right. Oh, but he loves me. Are you sure? Has he ever seen you? I'm sorry, Eve. I'm the one Paul's in love with. Barbara, listen. Has he ever poured out his heart to you? Has he ever told you of his, his hopes, his, his dreams, his ideals? No. Well, these are the things he's told me. I know he loves me, Barbara. I've never given him a chance. But I'm going to, tonight. Paul's coming over to help decorate the tree. He'll be here any minute. You, you can't. Eve, what do you want me to do? Throw my whole life away because you're afraid to face yours? You know I've tried to help you. I don't deny it. Well, then be fair with me. Let Paul make up his own mind. Tell him tonight. Not tonight. I've got to have more time. No, it's unfair to all of us. It's got to be tonight. Please, Barbara, please. I'll tell him. But I can't talk to him unless it's dark in here. Help me turn off the lights. Please. All right. Lights out. But I'm staying, Eve. I want to make sure you tell him. Just, just a minute, Paul. Hello, Eve. Christmas joy to you. Am I too early? No. No, come in. Oh, you're trembling. What's the matter? Well, uh, let me take your coat. Come over to the fireplace, Paul. Uh -huh. Sit down, please, won't you? Oh, thank you. 
Now, what is it? Paul, when you first wrote, I was the one who answered your letter. But the picture I sent was one of my roommate, Barbara Cooper. Many times I meant to explain that. I, I, I can't. Yes, you can. Tell me, Eve. Please tell me. You've got to, Eve. This must be settled. Here and tonight. Eve, turn around, please. Now you know, Paul. <laughs> you see why I sent you Barbara's picture. <laughs> why I insisted on not seeing you. Eve, dear, I knew you were not the girl in the picture. Barbara. Barbara and I are not in love, Eve. Nor was there any kiss in the park last night. We stayed up late figuring how we could shock you into a world of reality. I love you, Eve. I always will. Oh, oh this, this can't be happening to me. It's a miracle. Now, this is the season for miracles, my darling. Merry Christmas. Oh, Paul... Merry, Merry Christmas. In a moment, our star, Miss Lorraine Day, will return. This is Lorraine Day. Being with you this Yuletide season makes it a, a happy one for me. May I thank the cast of Christmas for Eve for a splendid performance, and may I thank you for allowing us to share your holiday. All of us extend to all of you our warmest good wishes that you enjoy the best of everything during this and every season of the new year. Get great deals throughout the store at Safeway. This week at Safeway, get mega packs of bone-in USDA choice beef New York strip steaks for $5.97 per pound with digital coupon. Limit two packages. Plus, Haas avocados are $10 for $10, member price. Also, this week at Safeway, mix or match 12 packs of 12-ounce cans or 8 packs of 12-ounce bottles of Coca-Cola, Pepsi, 7-Up, or Dr. Pepper are buy two, get three free. Limit three free items, member price plus CRV. Visit Safeway.com or head in store for more deals. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.